This is Tabia Sobi, and today it's time for another Monster Hunter World Iceborne build video. This time involving not just a Safi weapon, but the Safi armor as well. Yeah, I've been going a bit wild with all sorts of armor sets ever since the Safi gear was introduced, and I'm actually starting to run out of space to save them in my game. <laughs> time to start deleting some of those old Monster Hunter World sets. In a way, some have been better than others, but regardless, They've all been quite fun to put together. I've been fooling around with some Dragon Vein builds, including those that synergize well with the life loss mechanic. And let me tell you, it's been a hoot. <laughs> Do people still use that word? Hoot? <laughs> it's been a hoot. <laughs> Am I dating myself? Yeah, so some of the sets, for example, try to help mitigate that health loss, like a healing build that I put together. Probably should do a video of that too at some point, but it's just so hard to decide which ones to prioritize with my limited time. And then I also have sets that actually want that health loss to happen in order to take full advantage of it. One example is this build, which I'm featuring in this video right now. So for folks who aren't familiar with it, the new Safi armor sets provide two different bonuses depending on how many pieces you have equipped. Wear three pieces to trigger Dragon Blade Awakening and you get an extra 20% affinity with your weapon drawn, as well as a flat 80 point increase each to your elemental and status attack. Wear all 5 pieces and you get True Dragon Vein Awakening, which gives you a 40% affinity boost and a flat 150 point bonus to elemental and status damage, I believe. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it does come with a catch, as you lose health every time you attack. The good news is that you get all the health that you lose from the mechanic back if you continue to hit the monster. The number of hits changes depending on the weapon. For insect glaives, for example, is about 8 to 10. And then for hunting horns, meanwhile, I think it's about 5, if I remember correctly. Anyway, since I want to squeeze in a second armor set bonus for this set, we're gonna go with the regular 3-piece bonus Dragon Vein Awakening. Basically, I have three goals. One is to use Dragon Vein Awakening, another is to use Critical Status, another is to have Max Resentment, and then the last one is to have Latent Power up to level 5. I also want it to work with a Safi weapon with the base 5% affinity and still get to 100%. The Safi weapon will also need to have Ancient Divinity, so I would only need to use one Archon piece instead of two. Anyway, this is the result. So, since I put Ancient Divinity in my weapon, I needed to use three Safi pieces. That's not bad, because the Safi armor pieces are actually quite good, and better than the Archon pieces. The head and legs are my two favorites, because both come with critical boost and three deco slots each. Next is a choice between the chest and the arms. The beta chest has critical boost and 2 slots, while the beta arms don't have critical boost, they do come with 3 deco slots. Anyway, before deciding, I check out which arching piece I wanted to use. For the purposes of this set, either the beta chest or beta waist would work. One has critical eye level 2 and 1 deco slot, the other one only has critical eye level 1, but comes with an extra slot that I can put an expert jewel in, so it's essentially a wash. Now before making my final decision, I decided to look at the final piece of the puzzle. Basically, I wanted an armor piece with a lot of latent power. That left me with either the Zenogre Beta Chest or the Stygian Zenogre Beta Waist. I ended up picking the Stygian because it has more slots. It also has one point in the earplug skill, but it's not really necessary for this set. Also, since I picked the Stygian Waist, that meant I'll be using the Archean Chest. One of the things I love about this set is that, except for the Archean, it has a ton of deco slots. I mean, look at it. I honestly felt like a kid in a candy store when I saw this. In fact, it made me wish I had a lot of god decos, which I unfortunately don't. Anyway, the goal now is to get to 100% affinity. We already have 5% from the Safi weapon, so in order to get max critical eye, I'm throwing in a Master's Charm 4 plus one Expert Jewel. Now we're at 45%. At this point, we can throw in a Fury Jewel or a level 4 deco with Fury, get 5% more affinity from Agitator level 1, when the monster is enraged. 
This is pretty easy to do in this game. It's like most of the time they are mad. Thank you, Clutch Claw. However, since we'll be relying on latent power for half of our total affinity, which isn't going to be on all the time, I decided to go with attack boost level 4 instead, so I at least have a 50% always on affinity total. Yeah, attack boost level 4 is like the minimum attack boost you need to get in order to trigger the 5% affinity bonus from that skill. Otherwise, if you're short on attack jewels, just go the agitator route. Anyway, after this, I added two levels of throttle to get to latent power level 5. This gives you 50% affinity and also reduces stamina depletion by half when it triggers. It's not the max of level 7 since we don't have Xenogre Essence. But this still works just fine since it allows us to get critical status in exchange. Also, since we don't need weakness exploit anymore, I'm plugging in resentment in those free deco slots instead. Fortunately, I have a couple of Fuhrer slash Vitality level 4 decos and two Fuhrer slash Maintenance level 4 decos as well, so that just works out great. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And then I slotted in a regular Fuhrer, <laughs> Fuhrer Jewel 2 to max out Resentment. I then added one Critical Jewel to max out Critical Boost, and we're done with the armor pieces. In case you're interested as far as the mantles, for my Temporal Mantle Plus, which I use for safe clutching, I added in two Blast Jewels, since I'll mostly be attacking when I have it on. And then for my Glider Mantle, I added two Challenger slash Protection Level 4 Jewels. Since we'll basically be living on the edge with the constant seesaw of our life bar, Divine Blessing could potentially save us from a cart. The extra attack from Agitator is just a bonus. Anyway, I must say that this is one of my better sets as far as efficient use of slots, at least based on the jewels that I have. See, in most of my sets, I'll sometimes use a level 2 deco in a level 4 slot, or a less than ideal level 4 jewel, because I'm missing the actual decorations that I need. In this set, there isn't a single wasted slot. <laughs> Every jewel actually serves a purpose and matches the slot level perfectly, so that doesn't happen too, too often. Granted, this is more of an all-purpose build and won't be as suitable, for example, for weapons that need artillery or something like that. However, this can be easily tweaked for most other melee weapons. Speaking of weapons, you can use any status type that you like, whether it be blast, paralysis, sleep, or poison. For this video, I'm using one of several Safi Shatter Spear insect glaives that I own. For the 5 Awakened abilities for the weapon, I put Ancient Divinity for reasons mentioned before, and then put Sharpness Increase 5 for quality of life. That means I should usually have enough white sharpness to last one encounter until a monster changes zones. Then for the remaining 3 slots, I just use Attack Increase for all of them. Unfortunately, one of those slots is only Attack Increase 4 because I'm starting to run pretty low on Dracolite, and I don't want to waste any more of them, at least not until the next Safi Jiva event. <laughs> I mean, I am rationing that stuff out, like the last few pieces of Halloween candy left over in January. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, here is the end result. I actually quite like the synergy that this set has. I mean, taking out latent power and putting in weakness exploit would likely make it more optimal. But as far as Dragon Bane synergy and thematic purposes go, this set works really well. I mean, just bringing out your weapon bumps up your blast attack from 180 to 260 due to Dragon Vein Awakening. It's actually the reason I didn't put any blast decos in the armor pieces, because the status boost from Dragon Vein is good enough for this purpose, especially with critical status in the mix. The constant life loss and bounce back from Dragon Vein also means that latent power will be triggering frequently without you having to wait 300 seconds as long as you are attacking aggressively. All it takes is a few combos and your power will no longer be latent. <laughs> It'll be active power. It also means that resentment should be pretty much on every time you attack, like about 99% of the time. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of <laughs> putting in peak performance. <laughs> so I keep getting these messages about peak performance and resentment like going on and off. <laughs> Which kind of gets a little bit annoying at times, but hey, first world problems. So as you can see, with a power charm, power talon, demon drug, demon powder, might seed, red health, and my weapon out, my base attack from my Shatter Spear rose from 977 to 1355, and that's without eating for attack up L yet. And then if you use a Mega Demon Drug, that'll put you at 1361, and then adding a Might Pill on top of that, and you'll end up at 1417. That's just the normal attack, by the way, like it's not cruel raw or effective raw. I don't want to complicate this, so we'll, we'll just stick with base attack. Anyway, for my first test, I tried to look for a monster who's weak to blast, and so let's go look for one now. 
Who do I want to hunt right now? Not you, not you. Oh, yeah. My good old nemesis from past Monster Hunter games, Yan Garuga. You know, regular Yan Garuga ain't enough. So let's try its tempered cousin, who's more popular with the ladies, Scarred Yan Garuga. I know, because a wise man named Shane Falco once said that pain heals, glory lasts forever, and chicks dig scars. Honestly, I wish I could say something more classy and inspirational than a Shane Falco quote right now, but that just wouldn't be my style. <laughs> okay, no more puns. By the way, as far as fashion hunting goes, which is the true end game, I was debating whether to match the Artian chest piece to the Safi armor at first, but ended up matching it to the blackish purple of the Stygian waist piece instead. Yeah, fashionable. Anyway, after testing this set, I really liked it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased. <laughs> I mean, the combination works really well, and the synergy is a lot of fun. Now, understandably, some might see the life bar seesaw of the Dragon Vein Awakening as a downside. Admittedly, it can be stressful to see your life go up and down, especially when engaging tough, aggressive monsters that can take a huge portion of your health bar in one hit. But for long-time Monster Hunter players such as myself, it adds a mechanic that makes hunts more interesting, especially if you're starting to get a bit bored from normal hunting. You'll definitely need to pay attention though, because it's so easy to die if you get careless. I mean, that HP seesaw mechanic really punishes sloppy play, because weapon whiffs, or misses, still cause you to lose health, but they don't count toward the hits you need to regain life, so you'll definitely want to make sure that you're hitting with your attacks, or you'll be taking a ride on the kitty cart in no time. Yes, you can actually kill yourself by constantly hitting air, which surprised the heck out of me the first time it happened in the training area. Heck, I didn't even know you can faint in the training area, so that was a first for me. Oh, the vapors! <laughs> of course, the next question now is, what about true dragon vein with critical status? Well, I guess that's for another video at another time. <laughs> Seriously, I'm rubbing my hands like a B-movie villain right now. Yeah, these sets may not be meta, but boy are they fun. As always, if you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to share them in the comment section. Once again, this is Tabi Asobi, and thank you for watching.